this morning, if you will please stand and take your red hymnal and turn to page 113.
is the uh, meal that we share together. We'll be sharing a meal together uh, with uh, three other churches, maybe four. And uh, it's always so good to get together uh, with our sister churches here uh, in the Nectar community. So that'll be at 5 o'clock this evening. Nectar Congregational Methodist Church. Uh, it's, if you go down toward Nectar there, uh, past the caution light, on 160, go about another maybe quarter mile, eight mile or so on the right, and it's that church at the cemetery. Uh, and so uh, we'll meet there this evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, in the way of other announcements, no choir practice today, uh, but next Sunday we will have a two-hour choir practice. So next Sunday, you choir members plan to be here uh, 4 o'clock. Four to six to be choir practice. And if that's too much for us, we may divide it up and have many more short choir practices getting ready for our Christmas uh, music. Okay, so next Sunday. So Jolly wanted us to mention that. Also, she wanted to remind the youth that next Sunday, December the 3rd, is that next Sunday? <coughs> okay, December the 3rd then. Uh, youth lunch and service day, whatever that means. You young people probably know what that means. And I think we're going to do some stuff together that day, December the 3rd. Any other announcements? Um, thank you to all. It's inside, but thank you to all that brought food to contribute to the meal bags that will be going out to Thanksgiving. We will be able to provide for over 25 families, because y'all do know besides what's back here, the caution light church, they've been collected and friends of mine and Jerry's would have been and I think tonight some are bringing even cake mixes and stuff to the community thing to where we'll get the bags together and then we'll be distributed so um, that and also thank you for the Christmas boxes um, we were able to have 13 ready that will be taken today and the children match are paying for the shipping and so we got 13 little kids that are happy to Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we started out, we're going to do two. So it's amazing that the church has wound up knowing that we got 13 boxes. Thank you. Any other announcements? Sunday school report. We had 23 this morning, and the uh, uh, offertory was 260. 23 in Sunday school. If you didn't make Sunday school, uh, please make your uh, a best effort to be here with us, right? And I was looking at my, my calendar here, and I was, the next thing on the list is birthdays, and I know that Sister Flannery didn't have a birthday. Right, so stand up, Sister. Any other birthdays this week besides Sister Flannery? Well, we got Reagan back there. That was that the end of the month. Reagan? Is it Reagan's birthday? Is she already the passed? Third, yeah. The third. I got you. All right, stand up, Reagan. Any others that need to be recognized for their birthday? All right, lead us there, brother. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
others on our prayer list. I had another one given to me just a while ago. Mandy mentioned a friend of hers uh, has a baby. That baby's not doing well. Had to have some heart surgery. So we're going to add Waylon Sanders to our prayer list. Waylon Sanders. W-A-Y-L-E-N. Waylon. Waylon Sanders. His mom's name is Jessica. Uh, Malia, we had you on our prayer list for Wednesday. And uh, good to see you back. Glad you're doing better. Um, Rayleigh mentioned Ryan and Jackson. A couple of her friends at the, uh, at the kindergarten. Ricky Smith, Susie, Diversity Care, mentioned the virus, Diversity Care, and the TLC. Got the Betty Johnson family. We got Jocelyn on here, but Jocelyn better. Jocelyn have a tough week. We have uh, Rosalie and Carlos. And Casey, all them sick. All they, they're all clear and great. I won't go back any farther than that. I see Lena and Vivi on here. Joanne Porch, they're on the list here. All right, I'll stop right there. Do we have any other names? Any updates? So, um, most, I know that you will, but um, Mabel Riddle passed away. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, I remember her family.
Let's all stand together if we have a word of prayer. Please pray for your family. You like to come to the altar? Come ahead. The altar's open, always open. Folks, if I am ever preaching, and you like to come to the altar and pray, you come ahead while I'm preaching. While we sing it, the altar's always open. Amen. We believe in the power of prayer, and we've seen many, many, many prayers answered in your house. Let's pray. <coughs> Father in heaven, thank you so much. Well, we say that all the time, especially this time of year, Lord. We thank you for coming up and just leading the way. And Father, we just want to bow our heads again. And thank you, Lord, the community in which we live. It's such a blessing. Well, I, I know that there's a lot of problems around, and I know that there's a lot of things that are going on that don't need to be going on. But Father, we in the church, Lord, we're just so grateful that you provided what you have. Lord, we've been able to be born into this time and we've been able, Lord, to have a church and come together and enjoy peace, enjoy uh, the happiness, enjoy the fellowship that we, that we have. And Lord, we know that all of this comes from you and we're so grateful. Lord, the life that you've given us has been so good and so good to live. And Lord, may we be able to convey to other people that that good life is available. Lord, it's what you have for us. You tell us in your word it's that abundant life. And Lord, we're able to have that even through the problems and trials and difficulties. Lord, we know that they still come, but Lord, we're able to deal with those things through the power of your spirit, Lord. We're just so grateful for it because it's so true and so real. Lord, we lift up these, these names that we call. And Lord, we pray that you be with each one. Lord, for those that are sick, those that are in the hospital, Lord, those that are shut in, those that are bereaved, Lord, we have all those on our prayer list. Father, we pray that you be with them. Father, help us to be the, uh, the church, the friend, the neighbor that we need to be to be. Lord, I want to lift up our families. I know, Lord, that our families are, all of our families are somewhere. And I know we're, we're burdened with sin. We have sin, Lord, that we're having to deal with. Father, we pray that we might be wise, that, Lord, we might take your word, apply it to our hearts, our life, apply it to our families. And that, Father, we might uh, live our lives in a way, Lord, that's pleasing to you. And, Father, that we can see peace in our homes, peace in our families. And, that, Lord, when we come together, that, that it, it is a, it's a reunion every time we come together because we love each other so much. And we're so grateful. And, Lord, there's so many people in this world that don't know what I'm talking about. They don't understand it. Lord, they don't have a family, a good, rich family at home that they can go to and feel that. Father, we just pray that here, that among our people, in our church, with our people, Lord, that we can have this in our home and that we might be pleased in your sight. We love you dearly. And we know, Lord, that you, you, you desire this for us. So help us, Lord, to do what you have us to do. Father, we pray that not anything, Lord, that's, uh, that is said or done, Lord, here today uh, would not be pleasing to you, Lord, that everything, Lord, that we do would be pleasing to you. Lord, for these that come to the altar today, Lord, you know their prayers. And I pray, Lord, that you would hear each and every prayer of these that have come to the altar to pray. And the Lord, you would hear each and every prayer uh, of every heart, Lord, here today. And I pray this in Jesus' name, for his sake. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
song will be on page 57 at the bottom. And if you will please stand.
Praise His holy name. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Anyone else?
to the book of Luke, chapter 8. We're going to read the account in Luke. Verse 26, this is the word of God. And they arrived in the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, that would be shackles, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then when the devils out of uh, then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found a man out of whom the devils was departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thy own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Now this man had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. And he needed that. I thought just some of the things here. The demons knew who Jesus was. It says there in verse 28, Thou Son of God, the Most High. Do you know who Jesus is? It says there that uh, in verse 29, kept him bound in chains and fetters. That would be shackled. Are you bound by the devil and his works? Are you bound in sin? These are questions that come out of this. What about those people there in uh, the Gadarenes? When they saw what had happened, they wanted Jesus to leave. They were afraid. Do you want Jesus to leave? Are you afraid of Jesus? These are some of the questions that come to my mind when I read this. Some of the things I've, I've uh, thought about in the past. That's not where I'm going with this message today. Uh, just kind of beginning here. This event is recorded by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. 
Matthew would have actually been present being one of the apostles. And he records something a little bit different. He remembered a little bit differently. The fact that there were two demoniacs instead of just one. Neither Luke nor Mark were actually there, right? Luke was recording what he interviewed people. Mark the same way. They record only information regarding the probable spokesman of the two men. Probably one of, them, one of the demoniacs was probably more vocal and the one that spoke with them the most. So they would have been the ones remembered by some of the people. Verse 27 says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man. This is verse 27. It says, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. That's Mark, chapter 5, verse 2. But we read in Matthew, the one that was present, he says, and when it was come to the other side of the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. Some people just take that to mean these were two separate events. I happen to take it to mean that uh, Matthew was the one that remembered there were two, and the other two who were interviewing just heard about the one. But anyway, interesting. Verse 27 says the man that came to Jesus had on their clothes. What the devil would do, right? The devil would take everything you have, you get out of line with God. You start following the ways of the world, you liable to lose everything you have. Amen. That's what the devil wants. 27. The man came to Jesus, had on over. Verse 35 says he put clothes on after the demons were cast out. Mark chapter 5 and verse 15 mentions him being clothed and in his right mind after the demons were cast out. There's a lot of information that you can gather about this event by looking at all three of the records. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But that's really not what the Lord has spoken to me about. Uh, the reason that I came to this one here in Luke Is found there in verse 31. Verse 31. Verse 31 records the demon mentioning the deep. See where it says there in verse 31? They besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. None of the others, uh, Matthew or, or, or Mark, Use that word, the deep. Whoever Luke got his information from, remember this about what the demon said. Uh, Luke could have been interviewing Peter. Mark could have been interviewing Peter when he got this information. But whoever Luke was interviewing, remember that the demon said, don't command us to go out into the deep. There's a connection here between these verses and other instances where demons come up. There's a connection with Luke 8.31 and Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7. Matthew 10 and verse 7. It says, and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, Cast out devils. Cast out devils. Freely you receive, freely give. As you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, cast out the devils. There's a connection there. Casting out the devils and the kingdom of heaven. There's a connection with Luke chapter 8, verse 31, and 9, chapter, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. If you want to turn the page, Maybe on the same opening. But notice there in chapter 9 in Luke. 
Verse 1, it says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Interesting to me. Casting out devils and the kingdom of God. Mention when he sent those out to preach. Preach the kingdom of God. Cast out the devils. By preaching the kingdom of God, it's going to mean something to those demons. It meant something to this, this group of demons that was in this demoniac. Don't cast us into the deep. There's a connection with Luke chapter 8 verse 31 and Luke chapter 10. Seventy men commissioned and sent out in Luke chapter 10. It says there in verse 1, The Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Notice in verse 9, there in chapter, in chapter 10, it says, Say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Tell them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Notice verse 17, there in chapter 10. It says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You know, there's something here about the kingdom of God and mentioned in the kingdom of God that really means a lot to those demons, doesn't it? It really gets them scared. Because they know Jesus has all this authority. They know who he is. We mentioned that. Here in, in verse 28, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. Jesus has that authority and that power. All demons know that Jesus Christ has the ultimate authority. All demons know this, that Jesus Christ has the ultimate authority. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Part of the Great Commission. It says, Jesus, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All the demons know this. These demons here knew it. In Luke chapter 8, these demons knew this. All demons know Jesus Christ has the ultimate authority. And all demons know Jesus Christ will bring their judgment at the end of this age. They know this. Matthew 28, 20. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you unto the end of the age. The end of the world, King James Version says. It's unto the end of the age. I am with you until the end of the age. All demons know this. The end of the age means something to those demons. All demons know the end of this age marks the beginning of their damnation. They know this. And the end of their freedom and a fully realized kingdom of God from heaven. They realize this. That's where the connection is when we read up here. As you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Demons will flee from you. Right? We read that in Luke chapter 9 verse 2. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God. Demons will flee away. We read that in chapter 10 in Luke, verse 9, verse 9, saying to them, the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. And then verse 17, they said, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. Those demons know when the kingdom of God is fully realized, they will be driven from the face of the earth and imprisoned at the command of Jesus. They know this. Therefore, they fear him. They respect him. They know the authority that he has. That word there in verse 31, chapter 8, verse 31. That word, deep. It's only found in this record. Deep. Verse 31. Besought him, the demons besought, besought Jesus, that he would not command them to go out into the deep. That word in the Greek is the word of busos. Pusos, the deep. It is the word that we get our word in the English, the word abyss. That's the title of this message. The abyss. The abyss. 
Abyss in the dictionary, in the English dictionary, says a bottomless depth, a very deep crack in the earth. Anything too deep to be measured, it means the lowest depth. It also has been referred to as the chaos before creation. But in the Greek, in the Greek it means bottomless. It means immeasurable depth. It means the underworld. The lower regions, the abyss of Sheol. The lower region, the abode of demons. The abyss. It's the jailhouse for the demons. Jesus has the authority to send them there at will. And these demons knew that. It's translated in the King James Version deep two times. One of them here. Deep. It's translated bottomless two times. It's translated bottomless pit five times. All demons know at the end of this age, when the kingdom of God is fully realized, they will be driven from the face of the earth and imprisoned in the bottomless pit at the command of Jesus Christ. See, all that's in the background here when these demons faced Jesus and knew who he was. Abusos. Two times translated deep. One time here. Verse 31. They besought him they would not command him to go out into the deep, the abusos, the abyss, the bottomless pit. Romans chapter 10, verse 6, the Apostle Paul uses this word. He translates it deep also. Verse 6, the Apostle Paul says, who shall ascend into heaven? Verse 7, he says, who shall descend into the deep? This is right there in Romans chapter 10. You know, we know Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, right? I got it here. It says, what says, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see where he's talking about here in verses 6 and 7, before you get to 9 and 10, he's saying that don't say that somebody else is going to go to heaven for you and make things right. Don't say somebody's going to go to hell down there for you and make things right. It's in your heart and in your mouth. That's where the difference is made. We preached last week, we preached that there's only one church. And God knows who those are that belong to that one church. That's what these verses are talking about. God knows the heart. God knows you and what you have professed and what you live. He knows your heart. But anyway... Is translated the word bottomless. Two times, it starts getting interesting in the book of Revelation. This is where we start to understand why these demons wanted to go into the pigs instead of into the abyss. Book of Revelation, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. It says, the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. So that pit that we read about here, that deep that we read about here, that bottomless pit is a very hot place. And these demons know this. There are demons that are there today that have been there since from the time of the antediluvian age that we talked about in Sunday school this morning. You can read about that in the book of 2 Peter. It says there that the key was given of the bottomless pit. When him was given the key of the bottomless pit, what did Jesus say in Revelation 1.18? Jesus said... I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. So Jesus Christ has the keys to the bottomless pit. Jesus Christ has that authority to close it. He has that authority to open it. That is where it's translated two times the word bottomless. It's translated five times the bottomless pit. Abusos. The abyss. The abode of demons, Revelation 9 and verse 11. 
It says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name is Apollyon. Bottomless pit. Revelation 11, verse 7. When they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. The bottomless pit. Jesus has the keys to the bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. says, The beast that what thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and that they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And then the last time, we read in Revelation chapter 20, where it says, verse 1, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, where did he get it? From Jesus. And a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, that he should deceive the nations no more, until the thousand years should be fulfilled. After that, he must be loosed a little season. So no wonder those demons that were there... Where the, and Gadara there, where Jesus went, no wonder they didn't want to go to the deep. They knew that Jesus had the authority to send them there if he chose. And they begged him to let him go into the pigs. And he allowed them to do that. Isn't he gracious? Even to those demons. Amazing. Jesus Christ has all authority. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus Christ has the keys to hell and death. Revelation 1, verse 18. At the end of this age, when the kingdom of God is fully realized, Satan and all demons will be driven from the face of the earth and imprisoned in the bottomless pit at the command of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. You see, church... Here's what burdens me. Amen. How do we, how do I, or how do we, or how do you teach men to know what the demons already know? There's so many today that have no thought or no care whatsoever about eternity. You see, that burdens me. How do we get people to know what the demons already knew? Turn, if you will, to 2 Peter chapter 2. If you'd like to follow along. 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm getting close to the end. I'd like to read verses 1 and 9, then we'll turn over and close with a passage out of the book of Acts. 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Kind of speaks of us today. It says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. That's the world we live in today. Folks, there's some damnable heresies out there today. Never bring up what I've been bringing up to you. Right? Don't want to scare you off. Says even deny the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Here's where we are. You think about this. Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you. That means they make money off of you. They want you to keep on coming so you keep on giving your money. And pad their pockets. Are there churches like that today? Amen. Pernicious ways. Not concerned about preaching hell 
and the truth of it according to God's word. But very interested in making you feel good and keeping you coming so you keep giving you money. Is that not what Peter's talking about here? It says, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them in the chains of darkness to be reserved in the abyss, right, unto the judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, a person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the blood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an over, overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Look at verse 9. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and preserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. You see, this is Scripture. This is what we need to be preaching. This is what people need to know. This is what people need to understand. People need to know and people need to understand what the demons already know. Amen. And if we don't preach it, it's not going to be out there. Here's, in closing, look, if you would, to Acts chapter 19. Because I read something about this one time, or listened to it one time, about this passage of Scripture, that really makes this point that I'm trying to bring across. Acts chapter 19. I'm going to read verses 13 to 17 in closing. This is not my thoughts. I read this. I got this from somebody else. I forget when or where. Acts chapter 19, beginning in verse 17. Certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, we talk about demons, right? What we're talking about is the demons. Certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus and Paul preaching. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was, leaped, was leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Here's a point here. Like I said, it's not my thought, it's something I heard. But it sure fits what I'm trying to preach to you. This is a parable for the nature of the church when it ceases to be the church. Yes, this is not a parable, but you can convey it like a parable in order to describe the church when the church ceases to be the church. Right, think about this. A church that does not threaten the powers of the air is not the church. A church that does not threaten the powers of the air like these men here, those demons, we know Paul, right? But we don't know you. We know Jesus, right? Those demons that were there in Gadara, they knew Jesus. Jesus, you're the Son of God. We know who you are. But they didn't know these men that were trying to cast them out. A church that does not threaten the powers of the air is not the church. Here's my last thought. A church that is not known by the powers of the air is not the church. Are we a threat to the demons? In the name of Jesus Christ. Do we know Jesus? Do they know do the demons know us? Do they know who we are? In closing, Jesus said to Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
Folks, we're living in the last days. God bless you. Let's all stand together. Let's all think about those chains. Come here, brother. Come here. Let's think about those chains. Let's think about the fact that that man had lost everything he had. Let's think about the fact that those demons had had their way in his life. And let's examine ourselves. Right. Am I useful to God? Am I? Am I working my way to where I can be useful to God in the future? These are important questions for us as the church. Lead us, brother, if you will. If you'll take your white hymnal and turn to page 465. Have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Have a word of prayer. Father our God, such a blessing, Lord, to be in your house. I thank you, Lord, for these that have come. I pray, Lord God, during this Thanksgiving season, Lord, that you'll just be with us in a very special and real way. Lord, I lift up every single family that's represented. I pray, Father, that when we leave this service today, Lord, that everything between us will be right. And everything, Lord, that, that we have going into the Thanksgiving season, Lord, that we be laid on the altar, Lord, and we'll be where you'd have us to be. Be with us today, Lord, as we go and enjoy the fellowship with our sister churches here in the community. And we pray this in Jesus' name.
You're dismissed. You're dismissed. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no